Hello and welcome to another special episode of our series Beating All Odds. In this series, we are speaking to leaders who despite major crisis that COVID-19 has put all of us into are standing tall and are keeping the business going. With me today is one such leader, Mr. Chetan Mahajan, founder and CEO of Mavericks India. Welcome to the show, Mr. Mahajan. Thank you so much, Nazia. It's good to be here. And I hope everyone at home and at your work is safe and healthy and is doing good. Oh, absolutely. Yes, yes. And uh, we had actually, you know, shut our office uh, 10 days ahead of the official lockdown. So okay. we were uh, working from home uh, even before the official lockdown started. So, so this I is think usually on the hindsight, the first, that was a good move. <laughs> so you, this is usually the first question I want to understand. How are you managing your work from home? Is it like, uh, is it different, difficult? Or it's doable? See, it's uh, because we don't have a choice. I think it's doable. Uh, if you ask me if this is the most preferred way of uh, engaging with, uh, you know, fellow colleagues and the clients, uh, of course not. Uh, while within the times, I think we have adapted well in the last uh, 40 days now. Uh, but I guess, you know, most of our people, including me, we spend uh, longer hours uh, working. It seems productive, but the collaborative uh, spirit which comes uh, while working together, it just doesn't happen, you know, when you're all sitting on your own silos, uh, while technology has tried to bridge those gaps, uh, including Zoom call and other calls and now Hangouts and Facebook calls. Uh, but I think it's, uh, it's very difficult to bring in the, the creative, the collective creative uh, output uh, on uh, uh, VCs. Uh, but yes, uh, I think uh, given the scenario, uh, most of our people have actually, uh, you know, are putting much more time and are being more uh, productive uh, than ever before. How is it for the communication industry? Because, you know, you, you actually, uh, your job is too much about, you know, going out, putting up events, meeting people. So how much has it affected your business? So from a uh, uh, from a revenues point of view, Nazia, I think there has been a fairly, uh, I would say, significant uh, impact uh, because uh, the businesses which were particularly in the space of travel, hospitality, uh, they have zero revenues, absolute zero. And uh, all those guys have either gone on a three to six month sabbatical or have completely uh, withdrawn from the contracts. Uh, so. There are other businesses, uh, you know, where the impact is uh, significant, but their revenues are not bottom down to uh, zero. So they continue uh, to work with us. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, sorry you know, to interrupt you. Which the are these businesses? Which are these businesses which are still uh, using communications and are interested in, you know, are 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 still working with communication teams? So there are many, actually, you know, if you look at it from an industry point of view, uh, so two industries which are doing uh, really well uh, amongst all this uh, chaos and crisis is one is the, the healthcare industry, particularly the health tech industry. Uh, and the second one is the uh, education technology uh, companies. So for these two companies, it's a watershed moment. You know, I'm sure they didn't want it to come this way. But the, the transition, uh, the digital transformation of these two industries, uh, it, this has been a tipping point for uh, them. And you know, if you look at from, from schools to colleges, everybody uh, almost like overnight switched on uh, and started uh, you know, delivering the classes and whatever uh, online. So it didn't take too much time for them to establish the infrastructure, put up the technology. It's so convenient. It was just about you know, getting everybody together and getting started. So I have a son who is in class six. Uh, so he didn't miss, you know, initially a couple of uh, weeks, I think through his school time, they were just organizing and putting the structure in place, uh, making sure that all the teachers are available. But then they have been online. The tuitions are happening online. Uh, we work for, uh, I'm Calcutta as well. So they have also moved uh, everything uh, online. So it's, 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 it's business as usual for, both education companies and uh, if, if you look at education technology companies, I think uh, this is the best time of their uh, business. You know, it's, it's, it's a watershed moment for them. And brands which are somewhere in between, you know, they, they're not as active like uh, 
your education or healthcare and they're not completely shut like uh, travel or aviation what kind of suggestions are you giving to them so two things which are absolutely essential during these times uh, uh, one of course uh, you know this is a time when you really uh, call out your purpose and make sure that your stories are driven by your purpose and not by your product so the brands uh, particularly the i'm talking about the ones which we are working with the the brands who very clearly who have a very clearly articulated purpose they are not finding it difficult to engage with their stakeholders because they still have a lot of stories to tell whereas the brands who are very transactional are very product focused uh, they don't have much to tell because they don't have any other story uh, besides their product uh, i will just give you one example of uh, clay schools so clay schools of course is very clear with respect to the the purpose the reason they exist and one of the biggest reasons is this enabling uh, women to go back to uh, work uh, because there are multiple impediments for women you know starting from marriage to child and uh, uh, could be migration to other uh, cities or uh, countries and these barriers uh, uh, don't allow women to go actually back to work and pursue their careers with equal amount of aggression as men would do uh, so they are not finding it difficult to engage with their stakeholders because you know while the business is to enable women through making sure that the kids are very well taken care of while they are working whether from office or from home through daycare and um, preschool uh, but the the essential purpose the reason of their existence is you know enabling women to go back to work so they they still have a lot of stories to tell they are able to keep their uh, ecosystem as well as the stakeholders meaningfully engaged and not uh, trivially engaged uh, whereas you know some brands we work with uh, unfortunately it's a very product oriented or product centric or service centric uh, business so they don't have much to uh, go out and uh, tell another example which of course is not a client uh, I, i would uh, you know i i would love to name is in a brand like a shami because they are again very purpose driven brand so they don't have dearth of stories you know when they go out and you know engage with media they have enough stories which are revolving around their purpose and not centered uh, around their uh, products those guys are not facing much challenges uh, but others of course it is tough the second aspect is uh, you know your internal communication in crisis now this is also the time you know when you know most of your employees you are not able to meet with them or purposefully engage with them uh, in many cases you are not even able to purposefully occupy them and that can be very very uh, frustrating for the uh, the team members for the uh, the employees and that's where i think uh, you know uh, communication agencies as well as the internal copcom leaders uh, role become very very pivotal in making sure uh, what uh, the what the leadership is thinking how they are navigating uh, these tough times because it's not just about assurance everybody is going through these uncertain times and it can be not just frustrating but very depressing as well uh and i would take the liberty we are still in the process of uh, uh you know uh we we conducted a survey across 600 professionals uh, in the country uh at the municipal level as well as uh, with the cxos and some of the insights were uh, very very interesting so for example while the companies uh, may uh, be pushed to get people to work from home because of the uh the crisis and the social distancing which they will have to maintain even in offices and a bigger challenge is the commute how do how do you get people to travel to offices but people are they are just looking forward to go to office they have you know while most of uh, us thought you know that people will love uh, working from home it's actually very contrary to the general belief you know they're just itching they just want to go back to the office and that was i was actually surprised uh, while you know some people did mention that you know going forward they would love to have uh, some amount of flexibility uh, with respect to work from home but they don't want to uh, uh, have work from home to become the new uh, normal <laughs> that's very scary <laughs> and also i i think what happens you know when you are uh, when you go to office then work life balance becomes difficult when you're working from home then life work 
balance becomes very very difficult very because, very. because there, there, there are no, no timings <laughs> there are no timings and uh, and of course uh, i'm not getting into you know uh, all of us are we are you know, social animals you know uh, it's important that we meet people engage with people learn from people get inspired now you know for a leader to inspire uh, their teams on uh, i'm not saying it's not possible on zoom calls and all but you know the inspiration which comes alongside working together with a leader with your boss is very very different vis-a-vis uh, a virtual engagement so another thing that everyone is talking about is there already a lot of uh, there's a significant cut in all ad spends uh, there are there's no production people are not spending on advertising how much yeah. do you think people would want to spend on communication i mean even when we recover this entire uh, recover from the current crisis as in the lockdown but the longer recovery will take much time because you know economy has been hit and we still do not know how long it will take us to get out of this you think brands etc will continue to uh, spend on communication or are you expecting some kind of cut see cut is i think uh, would be an understatement uh, because if you look at a, any crisis like this you know whether it was the you know the lehman brothers uh, a crisis in 2008 which is the the subprime crisis or uh, dot com bust uh, in uh, 2000 now some brands have a genuine problem and other brands will also take advantage of this crisis right because there's an opportunity to negotiate and renegotiate uh, all the contracts call for pitches and uh, try and uh, save as much uh, as one can on various contracts because uh, if revenues are not coming in then the only way to sustain yourself is by making sure that you you're not spending too much you're controlling your cost as much as uh, possible so those things will definitely happen and i'm going again back to the insights we got from the survey most of the people expect the economy to uh uh to recover in no less than one year and definitely around two years so it's a long long time you know we are not looking at a v shaped recovery anymore which you know earlier many uh economists were talking about that the recovery will be v shaped you know we go down and we bounce back but that's not likely to happen and one of the reasons it's not likely to happen is because there's a lot of uncertainty both uh, from a business perspective and from uh, the perspective incomes which people and companies will have uh, and most of the people uh, we surveyed you know at least 50% said you know they are expecting to earn uh, less than what they earned in the previous year uh, in the coming year and uh, on the other hand uh, uh, there was a interesting insight you know they ex- also expect to save more because i think during these times they have realized that cash is not just the king it's it's been promoted to be an emperor now so you have to have uh, either cash or liquid assets and not uh, assets which you can't uh, immediately sell off uh, or liquidate so what has happened is you know that all the discretionary spend that will take a significant uh, hit people will not open up their pockets uh, easily in the next 6 to uh, 12 months but How some industries are, have sorry. overall on the industry on the pr industry so see the the good thing about the pr industry is you know that you know be it a small organization or a large organization be it good times or bad times it's very important to communicate Yeah. so you know whether you are talking to your people internally or other stakeholders because you're not here for the next quarter or the next year uh, businesses are made and built to be run till perpetuity and that's why it's very important to constantly keep your stakeholders engaged uh, not only let them know at how you know you will uh, recover and be uh, equally relevant to them how you had left them in january or february of uh, uh 2020 but even better what's the what's what's that one good reason why they should be loyal uh to that brand and that can only be communicated through uh you know your organic channels and not through uh paid channels in particularly when you know you're not looking at increasing the sales through uh spends then it's only about building and protecting your reputation and i don't think uh, any uh, any brand which is serious about their business serious about building a brand uh, and reputation for themselves they will uh, really be uh, uh, you know 
uh, putting a tight leash on the budgets for PR. Of course, they will get reduced, but the opportunity, if you ask me relatively, it's going to be much, much bigger for the uh, PR industry. This, this, this unprecedented times has, you know, taught us a lot of things and you've been talking yeah. about, uh, you, you're quite aware that the road ahead is really difficult. How are you keeping yourself motivated yeah. and how are you keeping your employees motivated? So it's a, it's a two way street, <laughs> you know, uh, I think, uh, I'm fortunate because, you know, we just started about two years ago, uh, actually we just completed two years, uh, this week. So we have a relatively, uh, smaller team, uh, and when you work with a relatively smaller team, you know, you have one-on-one -on -one connect with every single, uh, individual, every single team member. And it's the belief, uh, in the leader, uh, and the ability of the leader to, uh, be the best bet during these tough times. And once people believe that, that's good enough for motivation. If they know that they are they are with somebody who is perhaps most suited amongst the ecosystem we are uh, working in to help navigate, negotiate, and emerge as a winner from here, that's, that's I think, uh, nothing can motivate you more than that. Because in the, un you know, in the challenging times, in the, in the time of crisis, all you need is that one hope that, yes, I have a good chance of not just surviving this crisis, but perhaps thriving from uh, uh, this crisis. And Any measures so that think, you, 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 you're in the business of communication, have you communicated yeah. to your employees, you know, some kind of exchanges you have had, so which we all, oh, of all can also benefit from, you know, our viewers can also benefit. How do you uh, be motivated in these times? So we do quite a few things to just keep ourselves uh, one uh, purposefully engaged. Uh, the highest amount of motivation for creative people comes from having uh, enough work, which is creative uh, because nothing can replace that. Right. So if you have enough work and you have, you are able to, you know, exhaust your creative energies, uh, then you're bound to be happy. The second aspect is, you know, when people are missing each other or they are not able to, live uh, their lives as they used to two months ago, then you need to provide extra care. Uh, you need to be more than transparent. You have to exuberate uh, trust uh, in every communication you, uh, you know, do with your people. And you have to, of course, communicate constantly. You know, you cannot leave a gap. You have to involve your people in decision making. So I, I'll tell you, you know, that, you know, we have taken some uh, tough decisions uh, internally uh, because for us, you know, it's not too much of a loss of a revenue. Of course, we have lost revenue because of some of the clients who have uh, cut the retainers or have completely gone on sabbatical. And we completely understand and we stand strong with them because this is the time to be together, right? Uh, so what is very, very important, Nazia, is, you know, you, you have a very transparent uh, engagement with your people. So every 15 days, 20 days, you know, we, what we have been doing is we give a status update to all our people on a conference call that this is what is happening with our clients. This is what is happening consequentially with us. And let's, let's find the best way to navigate and negotiate this. So collectively, we have taken some decisions which are actually harsh on the people. But since they are part of this decision, uh, they are part of this process and they know why these decisions are being taken, it doesn't affect them at all. In fact, it motivates them and charges them up that, yes, we will fight together. And only if we fight together, we have a chance to win. Because unfortunately, everybody is going through a crisis. Yeah. So, so before we close, I would want uh, you to... Uh suggest what you think is the way forward for the entire industry you know how can each stakeholder come together and find a way to come out of this situation so i think first thing first uh, uh, this is the time to stand together i think many clients will come back and say you know that you know our business has suffered so we would want to reduce the retainer or the project fee for the next three to six months uh, and it has happened to us. And what we have done is, you know, we have actually increased the deliverables by 20 to hundred percent during these times, because, you know, in the routine course of business, it's of course, you know, we always do our best, like most of the agencies during these times, it is even more important that you're going out of the way and making 
show that everything that is possible is done both from external communication point of view and internal communication point of view uh, second thing which is again very very critical is you know that your people have to be with you all the while when you are navigating and negotiating this crisis because crisis will eventually be over and if it is not over then it becomes a new normal right so it's here to stay which means that you know people will find a way to uh, you know to live their lives around it and that's the time you know people uh, you know if you, if you have those right people they will help you move to the next level and i strongly believe that you know particularly for uh, you know mid size agencies and relatively smaller agencies uh, it's going to be a huge opportunity uh, and i'm i'm not saying this because large brands uh, and mid size brands will be cutting budgets and looking for uh, opportunities uh, uh, with mid uh, tier agencies rather than larger agencies uh, because larger agencies unfortunately have uh, significant fixed costs and they can't do much about it with a we uh, an agency like us you know today we don't have an office and we don't have to pay for it any either and when we go back you know we can we can uh, we can go into walk into any office so we don't have those kind of uh, cost associated with our business so it it makes much easier if you are if you have if you have flexibility with respect to your uh, uh, overheads it's much much easier for you to bounce back uh, in an ecosystem like this and my recommendation for uh, uh, people uh, uh, across agencies across platforms is that i think just be transparent uh, everybody is going through a tough time if you are engaging with your stakeholders uh, in a transparent manner if you're keeping them informed on if not on a weekly basis you know on a fortnightly basis what is happening and how you are able to support them whether it's your people or your clients come up with newer ideas explore newer avenues of engagement see what's happened is you know, if you look at the print media particularly it has shrunk significantly there has been a huge amount of transformation from print to digital now uh, clients cannot on their own achieve this right but if the agency is is smart enough they will help the client to make sure that you know they are transforming along with this journey and not trailing behind so i think it's very very important to unlearn many things and learn new things this is also the time to make sure that if you have any spare time and i'm sure many people have it these days so get on to online courses uh, you know whether it is from uh, uh, udemy or uh, coursera i think some of the best courses in the world are available just just retrain yourself you know make sure that you know you are one step ahead of the uh, client and client doesn't get an opportunity to tell you what needs to be done because that's the as the worst case scenario uh, you can face uh, as a agency be it a pr agency a integrated comms agency or a advertising agency doesn't really matter thank you so much for speaking to us i before i close i, I really want to repeat what mr Mahajan has said that let if if crisis becomes the new normal, then we have to learn to tackle it. And I think in a in a way it has become the lockdown has become a normal thing for us now. After eight weeks, we all have been sitting at home and trying yeah. to <laughs> find our ways to work. And uh, thank you so much for speaking to us, sir. There's there's a lot that we have learned, and I'm sure this interview will inspire many. Thanks. Stay at home and stay. It safe. was thank pleasure, uh, uh, Nazian. Uh, thanks for having me with you. Thank you. Uh, Stay safe. Sir, also, I, I I would request you to share the uh, survey with us, the survey that you've carried. Oh, sure, of course. Uh, so we're just in the process of uh, compiling the final report, and by uh, Wednesday you should uh, expect the report. Sure. I, uh, I really, uh, I'm very interested in uh, going through the uh, findings of the survey. Absolutely, absolutely. Would love to do that. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay safe, uh, Nazia. Take care.